So now we're going to look at how to animate on an asset. In this example, I'm going to show you how to move the bottle um, from a start position that is off the screen and get the bottle sliding upwards onto the screen. So the first thing we need to look at is the composition menu down here. You'll notice that there's triangles by the side of each asset that you add. And if you click on this triangle, it drills down into what we call the transform menu. So if I click on this triangle again, you can drill down further and you can see that there are things that you can then change about this asset. So um, particularly we look at position, scale, rotation, opacity. Now in the example that I want to show you, we're going to look at changing the position of the bottle. So it begins off screen and slides on. What you need to do in order to set up an animation is begin to add what's called keyframes. So keyframes are points at which something changes about that asset. And in order to add a keyframe, you need to activate this stop clock um, icon here next to the word position in our case. So if I click on position, um, currently it adds a keyframe in. Now we want the start position of this bottle to be off screen. So I'm going to click on the bottle and just drag that down. And as I do that, you will see the measurements change here. I'm going to move forward in time, so move my playhead forward in time, and I'm then going to change this measurement so that the bottle reappears. So now we're setting the end point of our bottle. So I want it to finish, when it's finished animating, I want it to end there. So if I scrub my playhead between these two points now, you'll see that the bottle appears onto the screen. Now the speed of your animation is determined by the closeness of each keyframe. So if I want to make the speed of that animation quicker, I simply move the keyframe nearer to the initial keyframe. So there's less space between them. And if I hit play by pressing the space bar, you'll see that it animates on quite quickly. If I were to move that across, the animation would be a lot slower. So that's the key concept in keyframes, is that you can move them once you've created them. In order for your animations to look more professional, you need to use what's called the keyframe assistant. Now this stops animations from looking like that they start abruptly or end abruptly. And you access this through the right click. So you can click on any frame and right click and drop down to the keyframe system. Now I want you to think of this as a train pulling out of the station and arriving in a station. So the first keyframe to so this one here, if you imagine that is the train pulling out of the station then we actually need to apply what's called the easy ease out. And this will change the shape of your keyframe so it looks like, like a little arrow. That will make sure that your animation starts less abruptly so it kind of fades in the action that you've, you've asked it to do. And the same here with the end keyframe Imagine that's the train pulling into the station. So easy ease in, so it's going to ease into the station. That's the best way of remembering which one to apply. But visually, what you need to end up with is these um, almost like open and close brackets. And when we play it, uh, it's sometimes visual to the eye, but what will actually happen is that Instead of abruptly ending, it eases into that stop position. Now, we've just animated it so that the position changes, but if I were to delete these keyframes, so I've dragged over, highlighted them, and I'm just going to hit the backspace arrow to get rid of that. I'm going to show you what would happen if we animated using one of the other transform functions. So let's pick scale, for example. I'm going to click on the stopwatch and at this start position I'm going to reduce this down to zero so that 
the bottle's actually invisible. I'm going to move forward in time again and I'm going to change this back to the 71% that we had just a minute ago. So if I scrub again between those two, you can see that I've animated the bottle on in terms of scale rather than position. Okay, and now that is the basis of keyframing and the basis of the start of animation.